Hi everyone! Thank you for subscribing and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm tackling a topic that affects many women but is often overlooked. Menopause and mood, the hidden battle. I'll discuss the significant connection between perimenopause and mood disorders, including the epidemiology, at-risk populations, the neurobiological impacts of hormonal changes, key differences in symptoms, and a validated questionnaire to help identify perimenopausal depression. First, let's talk about epidemiology of perimenopausal depression. Did you know that this is a public health concern? Studies show that around 45-68% to of perimenopausal women report elevated depressive symptoms, compared to 28% to 31% of premenopausal women. This period, known as the perimenopausal transition, can last an average of 7 years, and it's characterized by hormonal changes that can greatly impact mood. Certain groups of women are more susceptible to perimenopausal depression. Women with a history of depression are particularly vulnerable, as most midlife women experiencing major depressive episodes during this time have a prior history of depression. Other at-risk demographics include women who go through early menopause, minority races, and those facing socioeconomic challenges. Additionally, psychosocial factors such as significant lifestyle stresses and low social support can exacerbate symptoms. Women suffering from severe menopausal symptoms such as hot flashes or sleep disturbances also report higher levels of depression. Unfortunately, menopause-related mental health issues are often under-recognized and poorly treated. This lack of awareness stems from a failure to acknowledge the neurobiological impact of hormonal shifts during menopause. Reliance on flawed population surveys and a reluctance to use hormone replacement therapy further complicate this issue. Fluctuating hormones like estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone play critical roles in mood regulation and cognition. Lack of awareness of their neurobiological impact leads to ineffective treatment approaches that often overlook the unique needs of perimenopausal women. Let's break down some key hormonal shifts during the menopausal transition. Estrogen, for instance, is crucial for regulating neurotransmitters that affect mood, such as serotonin and dopamine. Fluctuations in estrogen can disrupt these systems, leading to mood instability and cognitive difficulties. Likewise, progesterone impacts the GABAergic system, which is vital for anxiety regulation. The decline in testosterone also affects libido and the sense of well-being. It's important to note that these hormones do not act in isolation. Their interactions create a complex cascade of effects on mental health. It's essential to recognize that individual responses to hormonal changes vary widely. While some women may experience debilitating mental health challenges, others have compensatory mechanisms that help mitigate these effects. This variability underscores the need for personalized treatment approaches. Now let's talk about some key differences between perimenopausal depression and clinical depression. Perimenopausal depression occurs during the perimenopausal phase, a time marked by significant hormonal fluctuations, cycle changes, and transitions in a woman's reproductive life. This period often coincides with common menopausal symptoms such as hot flashes, sleep disturbances, and mood swings. You might notice mood symptoms like anger, irritability, and even paranoia. These can sometimes lead to verbal outbursts over minor stresses, which may seem out of character for the women experiencing them. Additionally, many women report increased fatigue and decreased energy levels, which can occur independently of sleep disturbances. Interestingly, these mood symptoms can last anywhere from minutes to hours and may resolve spontaneously. On the other hand, we have clinical depression, also known as Major Depressive Disorder, or MDD. This type of depression can occur at any point in life and isn't specifically linked to hormonal changes. It is diagnosed based on a broader set of criteria and can happen independently of the menopause transition. Symptoms are more homogeneous and may include persistent sadness, loss of interest in activities, significant weight changes, sleep disturbances, 
and feelings of worthlessness and guilt. Understanding the differences between perimenopause and clinical depression is crucial for effective diagnosis and treatment. If you or someone you know is experiencing these symptoms, it's essential to seek support from a healthcare professional. To aid the diagnosis of perimenopausal depression, the validated MenoD questionnaire has been developed. This tool assesses key areas such as somatic symptoms, cognitive issues, emotional well-being, and more. Using the MenoD can assist the diagnosis and help tailor interventions specifically for perimenopausal women. You can access the MenoD questionnaire in the link below and fill this in with your health provider if you suspect yourself or a loved one who may be experiencing menopausal mood changes. So what are the potential treatment options once diagnosed? There are five areas to consider, and it is important that the woman plays an active role in deciding the best treatment approach for her. Number one, antidepressants. SSRIs and SNRIs have shown efficacy in treating major depressive episodes in perimenopausal women. Number two, psychotherapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy is often recommended as a first-line treatment and may be combined with other therapies. Number three, hormone therapy. Although not FDA approved specifically for depression, estrogen therapy has demonstrated antidepressant effects. Number four, lifestyle interventions. Regular physical activity and a balanced diet can improve mood and overall well-being. Personal anecdote, I find lifting heavy weights, boxing and pet therapy helpful for me personally. And finally, number five, social support. Being a part of a supportive community is an important part of the mental health journey. Despite progress, there are still gaps in our understanding of perimenopausal depression. Longitudinal studies are needed to explore the long-term effects of hormone changes on mood. We also need to investigate cultural and racial differences in the experience and treatment of perimenopausal depression. We must explore combined treatment approaches and delve deeper into the biological mechanisms behind depression during this transition. Always speak to your doctor before starting any new medications. In conclusion, menopause and mood is a hidden battle that deserves more attention. By raising awareness, we can improve the recognition and treatment of perimenopausal depression, leading to better outcomes for women. If you found this video informative, please like and share it with someone who you think may benefit. Thank you again for your help in spreading evidence-based health information. Tune in next week as I delve into the lifestyle interventions for mental well-being during perimenopause and the nutritional supplements that have been researched. So come walk the talk with the doc and see you next time.